Hello, beautiful butterflies. I hope you all are having a great week. Today, I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys have sent me um, on my last community post or in emails. And also, if you have any questions today, you can put them up on there and let me know so that I can answer for you guys. As well as those of you who are watching on the replay, please feel free to put your questions in so that I can answer them on the next live. I'm going to try to at least do two lives a month where, like I said on the last one, this can be in time to have some support on your gray hair journey, to get some tips, and also an opportunity for you to give some encouragement to fellow Silver Sisters who are on their journey with your suggestions and tips. So I'm just checking everything here to make sure that we are a go. Yes. Okay. Two fellow silver sisters. And of course I had to try to make sure <laughs> that. So the first question that um, someone had, had asked me that I'm going to answer for you guys is from a subscriber, Jay Summer. And she had... Hi, Tracy. How are you? Good to see you on here. Tracy, I'm trying to think. I think I'm going to answer one of your questions here today, too. So how are you today? How was your week? Tracy was our giveaway winner from last month uh, for my first giveaway that I did. And she got her t-shirt. She's still waiting for her other goodies. You're so welcome. And if you have any more questions from what you see me put on today, please let me know. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Love the rainbows. Hi, Catherine. How are you guys this week? I'm just going to say a little hello to you guys. <coughs> Someone mentioned in a comment that me saying hello in between is a little annoying. So I'm going to try and give you guys a warm welcome first and then we'll get into the questions. You're doing good, Tracy. Good. I got my water this time. So I'm going to be ask, answering you guys questions. If you have any questions about my hair journey or you want to offer some tips and suggestions, please do so in the comments. In a little bit, I'll answer your questions. But this first question you guys see on the screen, let me know if you guys see this on the screen. Give me a thumbs up if you see this comment from Jay Summer. <laughs> uh, she said she's a... Okay, Super Zoo lady, I should have all your names here. My nickname is going to be Dory, guys, because you please make sure to remind me of your name. <laughs> I remember you from the last live though, Super Zoo Lady. The family's doing well, Joyce, thank you so much. My hubby's being awesome again, and you guys should see me before my live. Like, I'm like, hurry up, I'm about to go live, get him upstairs. <laughs> so he nicely uh, occupies my, our son while I'm doing the live. Thank you, I'm gonna talk about my hair in a little bit too and let you guys know, um, I believe this is a week old watch and go that I have in my hair. Okay, good, you guys see it, great. All right, so let's get into it. She mentions that she's a new subscriber. She wants to know a little bit about my hair journey. Now, after this live, I will also include in the description box, if you haven't seen already, my gray hair journey. I am gonna be doing an updated video on my gray hair journey because next month will make three years since I've been dye free. So I will be putting an updated video, but for now, I'm going to be showing you another picture. She wants to know if I big chopped for my gray hair journey. You guys can let me know in the comments too if you big chopped or you let your hair grow out in transition. And she wants to talk about the mental journey that I made, um, the way I did it and coping with others' reactions. So if you guys have some tips or suggestions, also those of you on the replay, um, please include that in the comments for Jay Summer. I'm sure that would be very helpful. So first, we're going to talk about my Big Chop journey. 
which is what I did. You got the answer right there. And then we'll save the mental part for the last and then we'll engage, okay? All right. <clears throat> okay, so this was me I'm trying to see if I could get the exact, I believe this was in, in the summer, I went, I, I went, I cut my hair and dyed it one more time in May of 2017. So Jay Summer, I big chopped for my gray hair journey. I also big chopped for my natural hair journey. So I was like, all right, I'll do that again for my uh, gray hair journey. So as you can see here, my hair is very short and I dyed it one more time jet black because I thought when my hair grow in, grew in, it was gonna be just two different colors. And you're gonna see from pictures that that was not the case. So, whoop. so this is kind of a um, collage of a couple of, I believe it's about a year's worth. Um, just showing you Jay Summer, how I went through the gray hair journey. And also there's another question coming up that someone asked and I want those of you who watch this to understand that it's normal when you grow your hair out I told you I thought when I you see this top left here <clears throat> this top left picture I thought when I dyed my hair all black that it would just be black and white because as you can see in the second picture on the top what I was used to when my gray roots would come in is that gray halo let me know if you guys had a gray halo, how your gray came in, did it come in patchy? Thank you, Dolores, for reminding me of your name. <laughs> um, but as you can see from the third picture on, I had a couple of different colors that came in and that helped introduce me to the term grombre. Um, now that you've heard the term before ombre when you have dark roots and light ends, but grombre is the opposite when you have the gray roots and the colored ends. And I know that it's something that's very difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, to deal with in the beginning when you're growing out your hair. But I want you to know that it is normal. Let me know in the comments if you guys have experienced um, your hair when you grew it out, different colors or the grombre. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for coming on. Okay, so... That's how I started off. So now Esther had a question for me. She is growing out her gray hair and she said that her gray hair is not coming in uniformly. Some parts are brown, some are reddish. She was saying, could it be because she dyed her hair before and now it stopped? Yes, that is definitely one of the reasons. That doesn't happen to everybody. And like I said, let me know in the comments, guys, when your gray hair came in. Hi, Carrie how it came in did it just come in two stark different colors or did you also experience this grown braid so esther knows that she's not alone so like i like i said this is a more close-up view you can see on my left side the reddish brown starting to come in and i didn't realize with the gray hair or when i dyed it all black that you know basically that black hair dye had to fade right so here's another close-up and because I will say my hair was short um, I didn't have that much grown braid that I had to deal with but as you can see it did happen to me also there's like orange tips and here's another one just showing you like as my hair grew out I was dealing with those red tips so Esther you're not alone um, if you experience the different colors that come out of your hair now i am going to give you some options of what you can do if you want to cover up guys let me know in the comments too if you have any tips for esther and jay summer on how to camouflage those gray roots in the beginning to be honest with you the best advice that i can give comes from my own experience i am going to do a future video showing you guys many different women with their grown braid again so you could see that you're not alone and see how other women have been rocking their grown braid it is a thing it is a thing <clears throat> so this is also to show you the progression of my roots when they first came in on the top left there you'll see that 
it was you couldn't really see the reddish brown but by the second picture and the third all the way to the end it got wider and wider as my hair um as i got rid of my dyed ends now after i got rid of my dyed ends then i started to deal with the yellowing which i believe was another question that esther had not everybody whose hair grows in um, when they're transitioning from dyed ends deals with this grown braid. Some of them it's a very stark white, black, or white and brown, or depending on what color your hair was uh, before that. So let me go to some of your comments before I continue. And like I said, thank you to all who just joined. Hi, Dolores, Catherine, Carrie, Kimberly, I'm so glad you caught this live too. Thank you, Joyce, for your kind comments. Uh, Tracy also wants some encouragement. Now, Tracy, I noticed on your pictures on Instagram, are you, is your gray coming in yet? Because I noticed you had this cute bun. I didn't see any yet. You said you're dealing with the grown brain now. Please remind me of how long you're into your hair journey. You keep thinking of a skunk when you look in the mirror. So you probably have that stark contrast then, Tracy. Joyce, you had the same issue. You had gray, brown, and reddish. It bothered you until you got compliments. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Joyce, because a lot of us are afraid at how it's going to look. But you'd be surprised how many compliments I also got when my hair was like that. And I would say probably about the third or fourth picture, I got comfortable with that. The hardest couple of the hardest time for me when I was growing out my gray was the first and second part. Hi, Christine. How are you? Uh, Tracy, you're afraid of what people might say when they see your roots and black dye. Um, one thing I will say to you, Tracy, as well as Esther, if you're watching this video, and those of you who are on your gray hair journey and you're worried about what others will say about your gray roots, please make sure you continue this video to the end because we're going to talk about some tips to help get our mindset right. Because the last video we had talked about perspective, right, when it comes to gray hair. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how we could get our minds right to help us when it comes to that. Because to be honest with you, I'm going to show you some things that you can do to maybe help you along with this grown braid process or all the different colors. But at the end of the day, I think, Tracy, you were one of them. You are three months in. Tracy, I think you had told me that at your job, um, you know, not everybody has will be able to use the options that I mention here to cover those roots. So the mindset tips at the end will definitely be helpful for you when it comes to things that you can't change. I'm glad you're well, Christine. Okay, so let's continue with the slideshow. Okay, I have a video coming up for you guys on how I got my hair on the color on the right. Um, there is a product that I tried that my sister put me on to from Gemini Naturals. I tried two temporary colors, um, gray colors. One was a wax and the other one was a gel. In this picture, it's a gel. And I really, really liked it. If you have patchy gray hair and you want a more uniform color, you don't mind a deep, rich gray or a steel gray then this product will be for you and that video will be coming up on monday so that can be an option um maybe i wouldn't say it would be an option when you first go gray because most of my hair is gray hair um i do if you guys saw my sister on the on another live she also tried this color and it looks a bit different with her because she's mostly has black hair um but that might be something to do. But let me know in the comments, would you guys, when you're first going gray, would you want all of your hair to go gray? Or do you not mind that gradual kind of growing into that gray hair color? Sometimes it might be just for the first couple of months that you want those roots to be covered till you get comfortable with it or till you get more growth 
let me know what's the hardest part about the groom braid process. Let's see, Joyce, you said what people say don't matter. You have to realize that at the end of the day, you are still beautiful. Yes, Joyce, thank you. Tracy, my hair is white in the front, so it is a big difference with the black hair dye. I hear you. It's a, it's like you said, a skunk or as um, Adelina called it, a, what does she call it? Something zipper. Now I forgot that quickly. I told you I'm Dory. <laughs> um, Kimberly, you got some questions too, so I'm going to get to that. Thank you for the compliments. And uh, Tracy said she's at a corporate job, so she can't wear head wraps because that was the other option. And if you guys have any other suggestions for people on how to cover your roots, um, what about braids, um, Tracy? Like I said, I have some, Adelina wore some braids. If you look back at a interview that I did with Adelina, it's one of my first interviews with the Silver Sister. She wore gray braids in the beginning to help her to get through I forgot how many months I think she says six months um, and then once she saw how much growth she had she fell in love of course with the gray so I'm going to give you guys some visuals on another video of different silver sisters with gray braids that can be um, an option I believe Adelina did straight gray braids with Tracy another one that I another Tracy she did a mixture of braids it was like gray black braids so that can be an option if you can't do head wraps because head wraps is another great option and you guys can look at my I'm going to put all these videos in the description um on head wraps head wrap styles that you can use so I showed you this that you guys can use as well as headbands are you a headband person Tracy Carrie, you said you like gradually. Yeah. And it's so funny. There's some wisdom in the way nature does things, right? We don't just <laughs> all of a sudden get all white hair. It kind of has to, to grow in. Unfortunately, when we dye it so much, then we are dealing with this process. Probably by the time we decide we don't want to dye our hair anymore, we have a lot of gray that we have to deal with. Catherine, you said that you've been natural for 30 years. You now wear your hair super short with faded sides. You have a halo with a bigger patch in the front. You said, when I was at the Big Chop stage, did I use many products? Good question. I did find, I can't say it's more than I use now. Um, actually, I take that back. I actually use more products now that my hair is longer and my hair is fully gray than when I first started my gray hair journey. When I first started my gray hair journey, Eco Styler was my go-to. You guys know I love my kinky curly not today leave-in conditioner and my hair was short so it wasn't much to it. Um, I was still getting used to my hair being very short. What did help me though guys is getting a cut a tapered cut a, um, a, t a tailored cut to my face that helped a lot for me to similar to you Catherine having the um, the sides low and all of that helped me to kind of fall in love with a new type of hairstyle that was the first time since I went gray that I the first time I big chopped I don't remember it being tapered it was just really low um, but this time around, as you guys can see, I'm in love with the cut life for sure. Uh, Catherine, I said, use many products. I think I answered that for you. Tracy said gray braids would be an option. Yes. And it depends on how your hair is. Um, I did not try gray braids. My sides are very tender and very, not very thin, but they just started growing back. I did do great. Uh, I did do braids a long time ago um, but to be honest with you if you guys look back at the pictures I didn't really do much um, I didn't really do much it I just grew that in like that second row of pictures guys like it's so funny I look at that picture on the left in the middle where I'm like outside in the woods and I'm just like those first couple of inches were hard to see that and then the reddish brown and then the black. Um, but as you can see with all of these pictures, what helped me was makeup, wearing a bold lip, wearing some uh, lashes, wearing some um, makeup, 
earrings, those were things that helped me through that stage of the groom bray. That could be an option for you. Some of you may not be into a whole lot of makeup. Like today, I just have on some lashes and gloss. So it doesn't have to be um, that bold, but basically anything that makes you feel good. Tracy, you said you love headbands. You have one on now. Cool. Send me a, send me a DM, uh, Tracy, later of what they look like. Joyce said braids sound adventurous. They are. I really wish I had a picture handy with me of Adelina's braids, but they look really pretty. Um, Christine, you said that's great. You're going to show more hairstyles. Yes. And Carrie, you think you want to do a big shop? You're ready, you want that tapered cut. So Carrie, how long into your hair journey are you? Please remind me. Yeah, I think Tracy, you also asked me for more hairstyles and you're gonna help me to be adventurous. I did go to the beauty supply store and try and get some gray braiding hair uh, or like gray Marley hair um, and try some different styles like I wanted to do a gray crown braid um, around my head or flat twist braid flat twist crown I forget how they call it I also am going to try some perm rods um, so I'm going to try and do some different styles for you but as you guys can see when I was growing out my gray I was a new mom so I kept it very simple my hair was short and I just let it grow and grow. And I worked on my makeup to make me feel really good. And my son kept me very busy. So <laughs> once I got past the fact that my hair was very short again, and I got past the first couple of inches, then I was able to move forward. But I'm so glad that you guys are interested in um, the mental side of things, because that also is important. So I showed you... I showed you the headbands. Another thing is purple shampoo. Now, I think I heard that there were some people who used purple shampoo when they were transitioning. I honestly first started using purple shampoo once all of my dyed ends were off. So when you guys asked if I use many products, that was when I started to use a couple more products, which was, um, what do you call it? which was the purple shampoo. This purple shampoo is everything for me. I also have a purple conditioner that I use um, just to give my hair a nice bright look, especially the white patch. The white patch loves the purple shampoo. The salt and pepper towards the back, that is a little harder to look bright. And it makes sense because it's mixed with melanated hair. And that's why I loved, no. Nope. This is why I loved using the hair color because it gave me a, it gave all of my hair this uniform look. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a review in that video of that uh, gel that I used. It lasted me for at least seven days in my hair and it washes out pretty well. So if that's something that you want to even do during this quarantine or staying at home, if you want to try the wax to see what all of your gray hair will look like, that might be an option too. Hey, Wendy, how are you, love? Carrie, you said you've been natural for over 10 years, but you stopped dyeing your hair in December. Awesome. So you're about, you're a little less than six months. Um, and Tracy, you said you will. Okay, so... Those were the different options I gave. You can do braids. Some people do wigs um, to get them through. Uh, the difficult part of um, the grown braid process, headbands, I would think is the, an easy option. If you guys check out my Amazon store, I put the turban headbands that I like. This one actually isn't from Amazon. It is from Target. Who is the brand? I think it's... um. I forgot the brand, but I will put it in the description box. But what I like about these headbands too is they're soft on my edges and it's a nice turban style. And because my hair is tapered and short, these headbands were a way for me to get a different style in. And you guys also saw me do a bun in one of my other videos. So that's another style that I'm still able to achieve despite having a tapered cut and the headband nicely covers my edges that aren't long enough. 
So those are some options for you when you are growing out your gray hair and dealing with the grown braid. And like I said, if you guys have any suggestions, please put that in the comments for those who watch this on the replay. Hi, Des, how are you? Wendy, you're good. Catherine, you said your gray is very wild. Definitely some straight, some very curly. Good question. Um, to be honest with you, another reason why I'm very simple with my hairstyles is my hair thrives its best in the wash and go state. Um, my grays thrive their best. And I do remember somebody asking me a question here about puffy gray hair. And I find that when I use gel, I don't have as much issue with that because this section right here gets really puffy. Um, the the least amount of hair that has melanin, the white hair, gets the puffiest. Is that the same for you guys? Um, I'm guessing gray may not be like that because there's still maybe a little bit of melanin in there. But let me go back and see. Somebody had said something about puffy. Yes, Dolores, if you're still on here. You said that... Uh, I'm guessing you were saying, does gel work on cottony hair? It does for me. And actually, I think that I'm going to be going back to my eco styler. This is Uncle Funky's daughter, Curl Magic, and Aunt Jackie's Curl Boss in my hair. But my hair didn't seem as defined as I usually would like. So I'm about to go back to eco styler and see how it does. And it could be because it's getting warmer. I noticed that too. Do you guys notice that you change your products depending on the season? And I know Kimberly asked me some questions. I want to get back to her. You said, hoping to learn what shampoo and conditioner I recommend. You said your gray hair is dry, dry. This quarantine is finally your time to release. Okay, so you were wearing wigs. So Kimberly gave an option uh, too that she wore wigs. I haven't worn wigs in at least four or five years. My husband's not a fan of them. I love them because they're easy, but I, I still have to find one that goes really nice with my face. Kimberly, do you get your, if you're still on here, do you get your wigs online or like at the beauty supply store? Um, if you've, our gray hair can get really dry for a lot of reasons. Um, some suggestions on um, moisturizing our, our dry hair is pre-pooing. I don't know if you do that using some kind of oil, aloe vera, or conditioner before you shampoo, as well as do you condition or moisturize your hair daily. For me, I also have a video coming up on my morning routine. I just put once a week my stylers in my hair and then every day I spray my hair with water that has essential oils in it and I put a shower cap on to kind of reactivate the curls and I, I keep it moving. That's what I do until my next wash day. So keeping the hair moisturized, remember guys, we learned this on another one, that our the health of our hair isn't just the products that we put in it, it's also our diet. If you can massage your scalp to get the blood circulating. Um, so there's a lot of tips to be able to help our hair that can get really dry and similar to when you transition from relaxed hair to gray hair and let me know if this is true for you guys we also have to kind of get used to the different texture of our gray hair <laughs> somebody was saying how um, wild their hair is but what I was gonna say is when my hair is in its wash and go state it behaves the best when I try to stretch it or straighten it that is when I see that the gray is like, I'm not trying to go with the melanated hair. I want to do my own thing. It gets really, um, it's hard to get them all together on the same page. So you guys can let me know if that's the same for you. Uh, Dolores, you said the gel really helped. Okay, so that's good. What gel do you use, Dolores? Catherine, you'll use some gel. Yeah, gel helps. Cream is great for moisturizing. Um, and maybe, I don't know if you've tried that before. I think I told you guys I try, so <laughs> I try something called the LOG method, which is a liquid water 
and um, leave-in conditioner, an oil, and then gel. And that seems to do really good to seal my hair, keep it moisturized until my next wash day. Let's see, Des said, I think, yes, thank you, Des. It's the Cantu, yes, it's from Cantu, the, this headband that you guys are seeing on the, on the screen. They have two styles and it's so soft. The other one, I don't have a picture of right now, but it's like a, a white, orange, and black kind of zebra stripe design. So that's another option if you're just deciding you want to go gray and you still have to go to work. If you don't have to go to work and you're staying home, then you could just let those roots fly. But if you have to go out and hats are another option, and like I said, head wraps too. Wendy, you haven't pre-pooed in a few years, but you'll try again. When you did pre-poo, Wendy, what did you use? Kimberly, you have purchased wigs online. Please let me know um, some uh, links, please, to see. Because just from your profile pic, I don't know if this is your hair looks so beautiful. You're ready to leave them behind. What made you want to leave them behind? Kimberly, if you don't mind letting us know. Daily moisturizing with organic coconut oil. You're so welcome. Um, coconut oil and I do very well for pre-pooing. But in order to seal my hair, it doesn't like it. <laughs> it, it gets kind of, um, the texture is different. And I know it's because of uh, coconut oil hardening. Uh-oh, guys. Sorry, I was getting a phone call. Um, hold on, let me go back to your comments here. Wendy, you did observe gray or white hair strands are super baby fine compared to your fine dark strands. Yes. And I think I told you guys from a gr green beauty video, I learned that the actual cuticle layer of our gray hair is like lost. So that also contributes to thinner hair and it being finer um, because it doesn't have the melanin. It doesn't give, uh, there's like an innermost layer too of the strand that's missing. So that unfortunately affects it. Bye Joyce. You stay safe. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, Dolores, you use Eco Styler. Which one? I like the olive oil. Hi, Sheila. You're never late. You're on time. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, Demi. You did a wash and go without gel. Wasn't as defined. You made a flaxseed gel and you use with your oil while coiling and it turned out great. Awesome. Yeah. To keep the moisture, you go in again on day four. So do you refresh and do it all over again, Demi? And Wendy, you use argan oil? Okay. Thank you, Kimberly, for the website. If anybody's interested in wigs, do they have gray wigs by chance, Kimberly? This is another thing. I'm like, I want to talk to these hair distributors and ask for some more natu gray natural hair. Uh, gray natural hair? Yeah. I was going to say fake hair, but gray natural hair. You do use olive oil. Okay, Dolores. Yeah, that's the one I love. Oh, bye, Tracy. Check out the rest later, okay? Because I'm about to talk about the mindset stuff right now for you guys. I just wanted to put all that. But this is something that you can tell you tell yourselves. If some of those options that I mentioned for you are not available, um, like for Tracy, she said that, you know, because of her corporate environment, she wasn't able to wear head wraps. So headbands. Um, and then at the end of the day, as you guys saw with my pictures, sometimes you, you are going to deal with people who are staring. You are going to deal with people who are going to have something to say about your hair. And you may be dealing with some, just feeling a little bit insecure because of your roots and I want you to know that it's okay, it's normal. Um, I want you to remind yourself that you can handle difficult things, you can tolerate the discomfort of comments because at the end of the day, somebody said this, I saw on Instagram today, they were actually encouraging people to go gray at this time, that now is a great time to do it. And they said, 
instead of worrying about looking old, her name is Stacy. She said, worrying, worry about feeling free. So um, another uh, suggestion, this is something to think about um, that I appreciate. Accepting yourself, let me know if you guys agree with the thumbs up in the comments. Accepting yourself only as long as you look a certain way is not self-love. Do you guys agree? Yes or no? Let me know. And I saw this quote and I certainly agree because I feel like when you're looking fine and everything is going well, it's very easy to feel that self-love. But self-love really gets its strength <laughs> when you're not when things are not going when you have a pimple when you are when you weigh more than you would like to weigh when you have stretch marks when you have gray roots showing you know when when it's not the way you expect it to look and yet you love yourself anyway and you don't put a condition on what beauty is supposed to be or um on you being beautiful or not only if your hair looks a certain way i think is the definition of self-love and one of the beauty the beauties and the rewards of this uh gray hair journey is learning that fact let me see what you guys are saying here kimberly you guys are talking about the wig options salt and pepper they do have gray options. That's good to know. You lost me, Wendy. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, Kimberly. It's, it's a freedom is, is something. Let me know in the comments a word that you guys would describe for this gray hair journey. Free is definitely one of them I could think of. Self-love is another one. Des, you said, especially yours is a website. They only have two or three gray wigs. I know, and sometimes they don't look the most natural. Christine, you said no. Dolores, yes. Kimberly, yes. Des, that's, it's true. The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And that applies not just to our hair, but just so many things. Lo you can tell the test of if someone loves you or not, or if they are the real deal if they're not just with you during the good times but also the difficult times so it's not to say that you're gonna like that your gray roots are showing but can you still love yourself can you can you love yourself through that period esther if you're watching this and you're um trying to learn how to get all of your gray hair uniform there are things that i can give you as tips to hide but if you're just gonna let it out um and love yourself through that uncomfortable stage and get through it. Let me tell you the confidence that comes when you're like, whew, I got through that. Like, like, look at where I'm at now, three years down the road, I passed that stage and I'm better for it. So sometimes we just have to love ourselves through those, those bumpy parts of the journey um, only to come out with a stronger love for ourselves. Okay, you're back. Demi, you said no. Okay, I'm going to get back to your comment, Demi. You're not the only one, Wendy. I think a lot of us women struggle with self-love and acceptance. And this gray hair journey, yes, we're talking about hair, which isn't like a big thing in the grand scheme of things, but it is a trigger for deeper stuff that we may not have been dealing with. Um, so let me get to another slide for you guys. Um, what I would love for us to be able to do, because it's easy to just think about the things we can't control, like not, like I said, not everybody deals with all the different rainbow of colors that comes in when you're growing your gray out, gray hair out, but some of us do. And so you can't control that part. There are some things you can do to hide it. Sometimes you don't feel like hiding it. You know, part of going gray is that feeling free of not having to hide who you are, right? And another reason why now is an especially awesome time to go through that grown braid process is you're not alone. I have seen more than ever women walking around with their gray roots at very different stages. If you need some gray hair inspiration, check out the hashtag Silver Sisters on Instagram and you'll see a whole bunch of women 
who are at different stages of their growing out process. So you're not alone with the different rainbow <laughs> or grown braid that you'll see. So feel empowered by remembering what you can control and what can we control? Our mindset and our perspective. The way we look at things can affect how the journey is gonna go for us. So if you just focus on, I gotta get these gray roots out of here, like we need to show that that's just a little start of that love you know coming in and it doesn't mean you have to say I love you gray roots this is awesome it's just this is not it takes time it's gradual to learn to accept it and if you just make a decision on your gray hair journey based on your roots coming in you may not continue with it and and I hope that doesn't sound discouraging but it just goes to show you're just starting so you need to have a long range view because you don't know how gorgeous it'll be until it fully grows out. I always put the disclaimer that some may grow it out and still decide that that's not it for them. But yes, I love the things you guys came up with liberating. And Christine said, accept yourself because it's the way God made us. Yes. And we're not alone. We're not alone with that. Oh, Sheila, I like that. Revolutionary. Wendy, you said, funny enough, we may think negatively, but others, so true. You said, others love your whole look and personality. I saw a quote um, that talked about a butterfly. You know, we're our worst critic, right? You know, we're just seeing that. But a lot of people in stores, when my hair, before it got to this point, were like, I just want to say how much I love your hair. And I... Sometimes I would forget what was the big deal. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I have gray roots. So in the beginning, if you feel insecure, you're very self-conscious, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't feel ashamed, it's normal. But also don't let that stop you from continuing to go with your gray hair journey. That's right, Kimberly. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Gray hair is a crown of beauty. Bye, Christine. I'm not sure if... You're saying that you're heading out. So I want you guys to give yourself compassion for what you can't change, okay? Um, because there may be some who feel very frustrated about the beginning process. And I feel that compassion is something I talk about a lot because it doesn't require a change. It requires surrender. Like, this is what it is. I'm going to let go of trying to make it what it is not and I'm going to give myself a little patience for the fact that I feel that I don't like my gray roots you know or I would like it to look different you will feel different a couple of months down the road you don't know if you just look at my interview series with three women who I've interviewed so far and I have another guest that I'm going to be um, posting for you guys very soon this month another beautiful story you will see how many women, what they thought of their hair. You guys let me know who are fully transitioned. Do you feel the same about your hair now that you did when you first started your hair journey? Let me know in the comments. Do you feel the same or different? I know for me, it was a lot. It, I was tested in the beginning. I was like, oh my gosh, should I do this? I kept going back and forth. I had moments of doubt. And then... It literally is like going up a hill and once you scale that hill and you you going downhill like then you're coasting right after that it was just like then I really started to learn different things about my hair and do different things jewelry makeup your your clothing um, there are other things that you can focus on that's my next slide Think of the ways you can do things to feel better about yourself with what you have currently. Don't think of things that you don't have um, a lot. I heard tips like that even when it came to this stay at home that we're doing. Um, you could think of the things you want to do like travel. But if you're just thinking about travel right now, you're going to feel very disappointed because nobody's traveling right now. But maybe you can go to a park. Maybe you could go for a drive. Maybe you can go online. I even heard of people going online, finding a 
a destination they would like to go to and maybe putting that on their desktop or watching a movie about it or something on YouTube. Just try and find the ways or things that you can do because that helps you to feel more empowered about the decision that you made and um, it could definitely change your perspective about the whole journey itself. Um, we grow outside of our comfort zone, guys. Um, I remember a quote from Brene Brown that said, there's courage and comfort. You have to choose one. You can't, it's, it's courage over comfort. And so when you're stretched <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, let me know from you guys in the comments, did you feel that when you went gray, it was kind of like you felt exposed, you know, with your roots coming out? When you have the dye, when you have maybe a headband or different things covering it, you feel kind of safe, right? Like people can't see. <laughs> it almost feels like, like they're seeing underneath. And so that's how I felt. Definitely without my hair when it was very short, as well as... Um, the gray roots coming in in all different colors. I didn't know about the grown gray until maybe six months to eight months in. So, Sheila, you said because you contemplated the situation for two years before going gray, you were you were ready and you didn't care what others said or thought. This journey was about you and for you. I love it, Sheila, and. I like that you prepared yourself. I find a lot of people, especially during this time, maybe they didn't decide <laughs> to do it, but because of circumstances, unfortunately, they can't get to a salon. Um, maybe they can't get any hair dye. They did say the next thing that's flying off the shelves is hair dye and hair clippers <laughs> because people are trying to, um, you know, stay groomed during this time. But I wanna go back to some these affirmations that you could remind yourself that you can do difficult things you could tolerate discomfort and like Sheila said when you're making a decision for you because uh, the question that Jay Summer also asked was dealing with people's reactions I gave myself space to feel a little st a sting when I would hear a comment from someone whether it was well-meaning or not you ever had people sometimes give you a comment that kind of felt a little backhanded. They weren't outright telling you something negative, but at the same time, it didn't sound like a compliment either. <laughs> um, reminding yourself of what your truth is. Um, it did help that I had lots of support from my sister, my husband. Um, I did get more compliments than I got negative remarks. Um, but if you look at the interview with Tracy, um, with the Silver Sisters, she did not have an experience where she had a lot of support. She had lots of negative feedback. And that also triggered her self-love journey. It took her three years, she said, to be able to build this appreciation for herself when she has so many people telling her not only about her gray hair, but her relaxed, um, her natural hair. So I heard something and I want you guys to tell me what you think about it if you think it's true or not and it this was totally unrelated to gray hair but i feel it can apply the person said whether you do x y and z in this case go gray not go gray people will judge you or make comments right so similar to what sheila said why not do something that feels right for you if you are doing gray because you don't got the time you don't feel like being a slave to your roots anymore you want more um, cash to be able to spend on things that you like instead of what you feel you have to. Um, you want to also look at aging in a different way. Um, I'm gonna have a video on that too because I feel like gray hair is very connected to that embracing that change, that life change. But either way, somebody's gonna have something to say. So. I did a video talking about how surrender is a great tool for me when it comes to other people's negative comments. Surrender trying to control what people are going to think about you. We cannot, guys, say it with me, we cannot control what other people think in their minds. And so what we can control is what we think. So I think it's compassionate to allow space. if. Even if you're a confident person and someone says something to you and it stings a little bit, I don't think that's abnormal. But don't take that on as your truth. 
you can notice the wound or like, oh, that hurt. But wait a minute. I know that, you know, I am made beautifully. I know, you know, who I am, like kind of remind yourself of your truth. Come on here on Thursdays or find a support group, people who can help lift you up, especially maybe during the beginning of your journey when you're feeling the most insecure or the most uh, sensitive. And then after that, then you'll be like Sheila coming on here <laughs> and you'll be in a different place even to help others through their gray hair journey, right? Let me get to some of your comments here. You are most welcome, Kimberly. Uh, Sheila said, owning what is happening to us naturally. I like that, owning it. Um, a lot of things that we see messages in the media are telling us that we should feel differently about ourselves than we do. Um, let me go back to this so you guys can see me full screen. There we go. Uh, but being able to own where we're at definitely makes you feel in a lot more control than let me know in the comments if you agree with this quote as you can see I love quotes somebody said when you worry about what other people think you are in a prison which makes you feel locked up right you don't feel free so we're already giving ourselves freedom liber liberation from not having to die our roots anymore only to be stuck with <laughs> worrying about what people think I feel like when you stop dyeing your hair you unlock that cell and you're like nah I'm okay I'm not gonna stay in here on my own you have the key right around your neck to get you out of there hi our Arletha how are you so nice for you to be on the live Des, you said, one of my buddy girls texted me earlier, sent me a pic of a hair dye box and told me she was finna dye her hair. <laughs> I told her I was letting my gray grow out. And this is another thing that you may not realize for those of you who decide not to dye your hair during this time of staying at home or you guys are less than a year in, you never know who you are inspiring to embrace themselves and love themselves more by the decision that you're making. I myself, you guys have showed me that. I just made a choice for something that felt comfortable for me. I, I remember reading somebody saying it wasn't anything big or uh, historical that they decided not to dye their hair anymore. But just by making that choice, it helped others to feel comfortable with where they're at. So that is another reward from this. Yes, Wendy, <laughs> those natural highlights. Arletha, you said you are six months in. Thank you for sharing. Dolores, you went natural. When you went natural, your cousin asked what was wrong with your hair. That's hard. What did you say to her, Dolores? And Wendy, you said, that's right. Kimberly, it's sad when we have been conditioned to believe one way that gray hair is bad and you got to color your roots. You know what I think it is too, Kimberly, because I definitely, like I said, May will make three years for me. I didn't always think like this. I was definitely, before I made the decision, very hesitant. And even the first couple of months of making the decision, I still, it took me time to recondition my mind. It's true that from the messages you see all around you, even when I first started here on YouTube and I would look up stuff about gray hair, I would find videos about how people wanted to cover their gray hair. So what's very nice about everybody sharing their journey and being so comfortable in their own skin, authenticity is another, authentic is another word I could think of about this gray hair journey. Um, we're reconditioning our minds and many, have said that by similar to going natural those who are deciding to go gray is opening up this conversation of options not everybody's going to want to do it and that's fine because we all have a choice um, free will to do what feels comfortable for us and of course it's not to say that just because someone dyes their hair they don't love themselves i'm not making that blanket statement but usually a lot of people who 
are wanting to go gray or at that point they don't want to do it anymore but they're scared you know and so a part of the fear is confronting those beliefs that we had like Kimberly mentioned those conditioning limiting self beliefs self limiting beliefs that we bought into and that's where that liberating feeling comes from right besides the fact that oh my gosh I don't have to worry about even when I put in that gray gel I have to tell you guys <laughs> It was awesome because it gave me a uniform look, but because of the way I sweat and my hair grows, you could see the new growth coming in. And I, it just further confirmed for me that I was so glad that I was done with the dye. Like just let my baby come in as she is. Arletha, you said you're good and loving your natural gray hair, awesome. And Wendy, what are we really doing to our scalp and brain when we die? That girl, that's a whole nother topic when it comes to gray hair. Um, you know, as far as health, there are some people who have decided not to go gray because they've had a bad reaction to hair color. That has happened to me before. And that was not with box hair dye. Mm, it could have been box hair dye. I had went to a salon. I could tell you guys that story time or show you pictures on the next live, but I did a box hair dye myself before I went to the person to get my hair straightened. They colored my hair on top of it and then they straightened my hair and something they must have put in my hair to get it to straighten. When I had sweat, it got on my neck and I got such a bad reaction. And so you're right, Wendy, that, you know, I can't sit here and say I'm 100% dye-free, uh, toxic-free person um, with all of my choices that I use. But I, since going natural, I have I've been more, more um, ingredient conscious and more uh, towards the natural things than before. So I'm thankful for my natural hair journey actually because it set me up for the gray hair journey. So did you guys have any other questions for me? Wendy, you said we surely did get conditioned to relax or dye our hair. Yes, that not um, relaxing my hair was another freedom. Like I didn't have to worry about scratching my hair and being like, oh, no, I'm about to get a touch up. It's, I'm going to burn or I'm going to get a scab um, in my scalp. And um, I've also heard from so many. Let me know if you guys if this is true for you, too. Do you feel that the health of your hair is better? since you stopped dyeing your hair. Now I know there are some who mentioned that their hair might be thinning and maybe drier, but overall, especially when in the beginning, give yourself some time too when you were transitioning from gray, there's stages to it. There's getting rid of the dyed hair. Then there's similar to when you go relax, like your hair has also been conditioned and it needs some time to get healthy you know, and, uh, and to grow in a different way. So remember the things we mentioned earlier that are also a part of good health, not just products, but your diet, drinking a lot of water can help keep you moisturized. And, um, and even I, I think thoughts make a difference. The thoughts we have about ourselves, I think our body keeps score. Um, and, you know, when we think loving thoughts toward ourselves, not you guys know that in another video, I love mirror work, being able to look at yourself in the mirror and kind of making peace with those roots that you see in your hair. And maybe if you can't get yourself to look in the mirror and say, oh, I love you, gray roots, you can say, you can focus on the things you do love. I love my smile. I love my nose. I love my um, my eyes, you know, just different things about yourself because we are more than our hair, right? And so... The effort that it takes to focus on the good rather than the things that we can't control put us back in control, right? Oh, I'm so glad you did too, Kimberly. You guys helped make this live too. All the questions that you guys give, um, the suggestions, this is all a collaborative effort. So I thank you so much for everybody who joined today and you guys make the time go by so fast like I can't believe we're already at an hour <laughs> um Des you told her you was going natural 
that was to that other comment it looks like it cut off a little bit uh dolores I'm so glad you feel the love, Kimberly, and I'm so excited for you to be free even of your wigs now. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at the same handle, Naturally Graceful. You guys can DM me. Some of you have done that um, and showed me your progress pictures. I really love that. So you could catch me on there too um, so that we could keep in uh, touch. Wendy, you said it's still the same when I when you type gray hair, several videos come up on how to hide it. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know if it's gonna be like with anything that's good, you can't necessarily feel like you're gonna get the whole mass of people. But I do feel that there are more gray hair videos out there, people sharing their journey than there was when I first started three years ago. Windy or relaxed hair getting wet, right? <laughs> That's so true. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Yes, Kimberly, please do. I wish that YouTube had that, um, you know, like an ability to, you know, besides that, if you guys aren't on Instagram, you're watching this on the replay, please feel free to email me at uh, Nina at naturallygraceful.com um, if you'd like some you know, to keep in contact or send me pictures. I'd love to see, I'd love to um, cheer you on in your journey. I think that's such a, a, a pretty name, Kimberly Ann. <laughs> but um, I'm going to head out now, guys. So I really hope that you were encouraged by this video um, to see a little bit about my journey. I am going to be doing, like I said, an updated video on my gray hair journey, but I want you to remember at the end of this that self-love is not conditional. Self-love is especially when, especially needed when it's difficult. And so um, remember the words that were mentioned here today that describe gray hair journey, freedom, liberation, revolutionary, um, a crown of beauty. Those are all things that you can look forward to authenticity from your gray hair journey and know that you can come and join me here at least twice a month on Thursdays at 1 30 p.m eastern standard time for some encouragement for questions answered and I appreciate all of you so much those of you who watch this those of you who comment uh, later on and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video remember to show yourself compassion and I'll see you guys later Bye. Thank you, guys.